That's right, my friend. Are you ready for math? Woo! Yes. We got those engines revving up, and we are ready to take off, my friend. Yeah. Woo! -hoo. Moving on to some more partial products. Looks like it. We're doing lesson 3.4, and we just did a lesson about area model and partial products, and you can see the topic here is about multiplying using partial products. Essential question, our focus, how can you use place value and partial products to multiply two-digit numbers? Let's go ahead and unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because this is real world, baby, real world. Although I don't see a real world problem here, it does say connect. You know how to break apart a model to find partial products. How can you use what you know to find and record a product. Okay, well, let's follow this because you know, goal math are good about step by step. We're gonna multiply 34 times 57. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna estimate. All right, we have 30 times 60. Those are reasonable estimates for those two factors, those two digit numbers. Well, I love the simple facts. We have three times six, which is 18. Two powers of 10, we have 1,800. Okay, so that answer should be about 1,800. Now again, we talked about low and high estimates. 30, we actually went low, but with 57, we went up. So maybe with a bounce between the both of them, we should be pretty close. So let's look at step one. It says shade the model. Okay, and on the other side, we have think and record. Okay, so what should I do first here? I'm really confused. Now, it says here we're gonna multiply the tens by the tens. Okay. 30 times 5 tens is equal to 150 tens. So that's going to actually be 1,500 because 150 tens is the same as 1,500 is the number. And now it's to shade the model. Okay. Shade. Oh, you're shaded. There you go. <laughs> Mr. War, you've been kind of lazy. I know I would have to get out my coloring crayon. Do you really want me to do that? You do? Okay, I love my coloring crayon. There, does that look a little bit better? Okay. Now, step two says we're going to multiply the ones by the tens. You can see it's highlighted the seven and the three. All right, so we're going to take 30 and we're going to multiply it by the seven ones, which is 210 ones, which is really 210. Okay, now I need to shade that part of the model. There we go. Looks good. Okay, step three. Now it says we're going to multiply the tens by the ones because we hadn't done that one yet. Remember, we have the four times the five tens, which happens to be 20 tens. And 20 tens is the same as 200. Okay, and we'll do this one in green. Cool. All right. Are you good? Much prettier. Yes, it is. It's a little bit nicer. Now I've moved to step four. And step four says we're going to need to multiply the ones by the ones. So four times seven ones is just 28 ones. And 28 ones is the same as two tens and eight ones. So let's go ahead and put that down. 28. And then I need to shade. Now it says to add the partial products. Okay, so I have eight. I have, looks like a two, looks like a three. I have two, four, and five, that's nine, and then one. And there you go. It's 1,938. And since it's close to the 1,800 we had up above, we say it's reasonable. Yeah. Okay, pretty cool. They took this into another area. We we got to see the recording of the partial products along the side with the model on the left. So we're gradually moving our way towards just doing the standard algorithm. But right now we're learning how those partial products explain what we're doing. It helps us understand the math. Okay, cool. Page master. Woo hoo. There we go. Now here's a real world problem. It says the apples from each tree in an orchard can fill 23 bushel baskets. If one row of the orchid has 48 trees, how many baskets of apples can be filled? Cool. And bushel baskets, this is just a unit of measure. Not too common, actually. Uh, I know it has to do with dry volume. I think of volume, we always kind of think of it being like liquid. It's a dry bushel. I don't know how much it weighs. I forget. Uh, but it's a certain quantity. Anyway, so it says we're going to multiply 48 times 23. It says the estimate, why don't you estimate 50 times 20? Now the 48, the 50, we went a little bit up. And the 23, we went a little bit down. So that should get us pretty close. We do our simple facts. We've got a couple of powers of 10. So our answer should be around 1,000. Step one, multiply the tens by the tens. All right, the four times the 20 tens. So here it says 40 times two tens, which is equal to, that's right, 
80 tens, so we'll write 800 down below as our partial product. Step two, says multiply the ones by the tens, which is our three, which is the ones, and our 40 tens. So we have the 40 times the three ones, it's gonna give us 120 ones. So we'll write 120 ones. Step three, multiply the tens by the ones. It says I have our 20, our two tens, times our eight, giving us 16 tens, which of course is 160, okay? Because that unit says tens, okay? So it's important that we make sure that we put that back on. Step four, multiply the ones by the ones, then add the partial products. Okay, by the ones by the ones, eight times three ones is simply 24 ones. So we put our 24 down, and now we just add our partial products and we end up with four. Looks like here we have eight, and two is 10, carry the one. Now I have eight, nine, 10, 11. Looks like 1,104, which is super close to our estimate of 1,000, super close. So 1,104 baskets can be filled. That's how we answer that question. How do you know your answer is reasonable? Just mention it. If our estimate was 1,000 and our actual answer is 1,104, then that's very reasonable. Okay, looks like the last section here. Share and show. Yahoo! And you know what that means? I'm going to do my circling, yes? Math board. Yes, math board. Come and get it. Okay, if you have a math board, grab it. You have a little erase marker, use it. Have some fun. Okay, it says find 24 times 34. Okay, two-digit number times a two-digit number. That's what we've been doing. Look at our area model. It shows it. Our 20 times our 30. There that is. Our 20 times our four right over there. Okay, that's listed there. Now we move down to the four. The four times the 30, the four of this number with that 30, and then of course that four with that four. <laughs> kind of messy, but you get the point. They've already done the partial products for us, so it really isn't too much that we have to do here, I guess, except just write the numbers in. I'm assuming they don't want us to do the standard algorithm, so this is going to be 600 then. We're going to be adding 600 plus our 120 plus our 80 plus our 16. Those are all our partial products each one of these when we add them together. Now we get six. Now we have nine here, plus two, which is 11. Carry the one, we end up with seven, eight, 816. I like that, I can live with that. Woohoo! yeah, yeah. Oh, I know, what is this? The end of another video. Woo, 3.4, <laughs> gone again. You look, you look again, it's gone. <laughs> My friends, thank you so much for coming aboard. I appreciate you coming and, and utilizing these videos. And initially, I started creating for my own class. And now I see there's quite a few fourth graders out there that are using these videos. So please, any feedback? Hey, bring it my way, my friends. Any questions or comments, I do try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Now, my good friends, live long and prosper.